Sigile Imini Enkulu, welcome to JGF Amplified, where we have conversations with leaders and experts that impact the education system. And I'm Sanje and I've been Dodwa and Lilo Ilolo. I've never come on this podcast alone, and today I have a special guest who we will be having conversations on what it takes to be uh, a, a postgraduate student within the School of Education at the University of Cape Town. But I will be co-piloting. I will not be the only host today. Today we have a JGF candidate fellow, Munaka Munai. Before we get to Munaka, let's first hear from our guest today. Who are you? Where you're from? What are you about? Thanks. Nicole Lesh from the School of Education at UCT. I am the PGC, which is Postgraduate Certificate in Education, Admissions Advisor. Lovely stuff. And my co-pilot today, Munaka, Candidate Fellow from JGF, as I said. Munaka, how are you? I'm excellent. Thank you so much, Matavo. I hope you're well. Thank you so much for joining us, Nicole. Um, just a brief intro on myself. I am Munaka Chiridzimunyai, and I'm an educationalist and conversationalist at heart. So I'm really excited to be here sharing some information and shedding some insight on this fun process um, of applying to a PGCE. A fun process, Munaka says. <laughs> and today, really, the heart of the conversation is to understand the requirements from UCT, things that students possibly may be taking for granted when applying to be part of the PGCE program and any nitty gritty that Munaka herself as a candidate fellow as a student at this university has picked up from her lived experience of being in the space. Um, yeah, so we hope that this session really is enriching to everyone who is tuning in. And Nicole, our first question to you is, what do students take for granted often because you are the first eyes that engage each and every application that comes through to this uh, uh, department. What do people often take for granted when it comes to the application process? So it's quite a few things. Uh, for starters, incomplete transcripts mm. uh, or missing information and then students applying for the incorrect um, application code. Yeah. Um, and then there's students who so we've got a set criteria, um, which is quite clear. We've got a set of FAQs, which kind of guide students as well. But those FAQs are often sort of not read as well. Yeah. Mm. So is there a, a source that individuals can go to to get clarity on, I'm hearing codes, I'm, I'm hearing incomplete this and transcript that. Is there a, sp a space that I can go to and actually see all of this available to me? Absolutely. So on the School of Education website, particularly on the PGCE um, web page, all of the information, so how to apply guidelines on how to apply, mm. uh, sort of the criteria as well, which I'll take you through in a minute. Awesome, awesome. All right, awesome. I think that's also very clear on my side, but I wanted to ask for external students, for example, that perhaps have not done their undergraduate at UCT, what's the first point of reference, especially with application fees that they should look out for? Good question. So also on our webpage, we have links sort of to the fees and the um, sort of finance departments. And so students can look through the fee structure. It, there is a hundred rand application fee for local students. Mm. It's a bit higher for international students and it's a bit of a separate process for international students, in fact. All right. Yeah. So when it comes to the subjects, right, that people have come through various streams to be in this yeah. department, do we distinguish certain subjects from others when it comes to streamlining um, the application process and actually taking part in the program itself? Definitely. So ideally, we want a student to have two teaching subjects. Mm. Um, firstly, it makes the student more employable um, once they graduate. Mm. Um, we do take in students with one teaching subject. At the moment, that's limited to history only and maths only. With that said, a student needs to have 120 credits of history throughout the undergrad, and then we allow 60 credits of maths, pure mathematics for maths. 
for 2024 we won't be offering english only nor geography only mm. um and then just to link back to the two subjects that can be anything so uh, there's a list of subjects on our web page as well um i can mention a few it's economics it's accounting we like those two together yeah. or maths can be done with either of those We've got um, geography mixed maybe with Afrikaans or mixed with natural sciences. We've got physical sciences, life sciences and so forth. Yeah. So when it comes to, you know, teaching in context, we are in the Western Cape. Uh, one of the most predominantly spoken languages here is Isikosa. And I see that part of your your program is that it's important or even incumbent of students to take as a class what was the rationale um, um behind that mm. so most li- obviously for students to engage in the classroom and ideally to just promote li- Af- african languages in the classroom as far as we can um it's a bit limited obviously with only the one at the moment so s- we would like students to take up a first year course mm. um but we do offer it the language in first the first during the pgc as well all right yeah. so, so it's I not a must to do it at undergrad level it is advantageous because it's more in depth during your first year whereas we are just going to offer a communications course basically all right all right all right awesome um besides the communication course my understanding is also that this is a school of education located in the humanities department That's right. so what is um some of the anticipated adjustments that other students coming from other departments within UCT or from other universities can just expect in terms of finding the school of education not the, the location of the school but in terms of the application so um It's important so I'm going to just go to application codes. It's important to know that when you have two subjects you need to apply for HG020. So that automatically means you've got two teaching subjects and that's where you apply. Moving on to HG026 for music students only and then HG027 for dance, drama and fine arts students now. Mm. If you apply for the incorrect code your application will be delayed. or it will be eliminated and so it's very important to take note of these um application codes also on our web page on our leaflets uh, sort of broadly communicated um does that answer is there any comms that go out to individuals who have perhaps put in the wrong codes for them to 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 rectify that no so UCT has a sort of application directive Yes. which each you know not is kind of expected to download and work through before making the application I'd like to believe that mm-hmm. um and then I also link students back to that in our guidelines so everything's listed there um if you do apply for the incorrect code like I said it can just delay your application if I get to it in time I can change it but there are mm. no promises most of the time I do it does affect my process though yeah. um majority yeah. of the time I'm going to change the application obviously I want to provide access to the student but it well it doesn't mean that um you know if you applied in April I'm going to get you sort of at the end of April you, that application will wait for later um because I won't recognize you know the incorrect code until much later yeah yeah We also get a confirmation email which saved yeah. me like right in the nick of time so I was able to adjust that and send an email which is you know empathetically handled but I also recommend that uh if you are a student in UCT or outside of UCT that you check uh the humanities postgraduate booklet that is available online widely mm-hmm. because it does speak to those codes as well as what to look out for for your your application being complete in time Absolutely yeah, and building that. on that um even if you have missing documentation you get mm-hmm. an email to say you know you mm-hmm. have time there's a deadline of course to yes. upload the missing documentation but again it delays your process and I'm on my spreadsheet it's going to push you down the list if mm-hmm. you know that kind of mm-hmm. makes sense and because all of that stuff is clear up front but they are second chances yeah right right yeah. so when thinking about uh our relationship and by our the Jacks have our fellowship and the University of Cape Town from your position mm. as the administrative officer if you will admissions advisor admissions advisor apologies no about worries. that um what has been the value mm. of 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 this year connection between yeah. the institution and our fellowship yeah. in your view i think there's always been a great value um and kate just mentioned that earlier um just sort of emphasizing the 
um, UCT and the School of Education in particular values uh, the relationship with Jake Scherval. What we find is that the fellows or candidates, as you um, call the students, so they are particularly strong students and mm. so they provide great value in the classroom um, sort of at use at the school of education and then also when we send these students out to teaching practice the mentorship programs that you offer also strengthens the students tremendously and we often at, towards the end of the year we find principals and teachers trying to snatch students to employ <laughs> them very early on before they even graduate um, so it's a partnership that we'd like to maintain or sustain if you like um, and we're always surprised to see the students coming the fellows coming through um, mm. they just didn't reach the, the classroom generally yeah 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 I'm definitely excited to attest to that fact. Um, I'm also happy to see the relationship play out, but I think it becomes a very strong relationship in that we are encouraged to take initiative as candidate fellows and just immerse ourselves in the program because we've had a, a very strong co-curricular program. But the other thing, when you were speaking of the list that it pushes you down in the list, is I was thinking about placement and admissions that are available. I'm very cognizant that you know we're encouraged to apply early because of the limited amount of space. But just to be exact, in each program, for example, senior phase, foundation, phase and then um, further education and training like what does the space look like great question actually two questions that you asked so just to emphasize that we are not offering foundation and intermediate phase we haven't offered it since 2020 mm. uh, we won't offer it next year probably not the following year as well um, then in general so we just offering SBN FET and FET only, as I mentioned at the start, um, SBN FET is sort of having two subjects and FET only is one subject. We have a limit of to 200 places. So we make just over double offers with the expectation that the 200 will register. We do, however, well, last year we received 3,500 applications, mm. of which everything needed to be worked through and processed uh, for only 200 students. Is yeah. there kind of a preferential consideration when it comes to the application process, being that you're from UCT or you're not, or any kind of... No, not mm. at all. Okay. None whatsoever. There is an admissions criteria, though. That's fairly new. It's been implemented within the last two years. Um, for example, if you're doing English and history, you'd need to have 65% across all three years of undergrad. Mm. And then it varies per subject, but yeah. that's it. It has nothing to do with where you're coming from. Yeah. And we don't even process UCT's applications first. It's, it, all applications are done on a first come, first serve basis. Wow, mm. great. Yeah. So what kinds of adjustments have you noticed from students who are not from UCT, uh, coming in, learning the culture, learning the ways of, 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 the, of the department itself, mm -hmm. how do they fare usually from your history? So I think I've set up the set of FAQs that I mentioned at the start mm -hmm. and I sent that in December mm -hmm. of the previous year and I urge students to go through them before they even come into the program and that is a kind of nice way to start prepping them. It takes them to various links of logistically um, just to get into the program, you know, be it residences, be it IT related, uh, bus routes, mm. people soft, Vula. Yeah. Um, so it's quite extensive. I've got a set sort of for current students and then a set of FAQs for prospective students as well. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm hoping that that prepared you. It how? definitely prepared me. I think structurally, um, what you sent in December was very helpful. Um, but it also, it made me a bit nervous because um, we had just kind of finished undergrad and then applications were closed. My applications were sent in, but I wasn't sure when I was going to get the confirmation. So it's like waiting in that anticipation process. Um, but the first question I kind of have for you is, um, when do applications close and when do you confirm that someone has a spot? Right, so applications close on the 31st of August. Mm -hmm. I'd like to give you the easy answer as to when students will know, but I don't have the answer to mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on how many applications come in. Yes, um, processing. And this, so for UCT's PGCE, you need a degree and there's many diploma mm. students who are not eligible and we need to work through everything. Mm. And so I know it's sort of, you know, the student disadvantages the applicants, uh, the successful mm. applica applicants a bit, but it's the process. 
No, I completely yeah. understand yeah. now. Um, because I like when I was not behind that process, I felt like we were like waiting. But I'm glad that now we have a yeah. sense of confirmation of the number of applications you have to go through. But my final question for you then is just structurally um, speaking, because you send those FAQs and stuff, and perhaps that may be daunting information for someone to go through. Are there any other video, perhaps, uh, or any other mediums of material that someone could just look out for on YouTube or any other sources? We've actually got some prior videos, um, sort of the webinar series of the Czech Scherval uh, Fellowship, um, and it's on our website as well. Brilliant. That's one space to look at. Um, and if I could just touch um, on, if that answers your question, it if does, I could just touch you. on some other tips. Mm. Mm, um, please. I, so for students, in the in the sort of in the sciences, um, particularly if you if you wish to do life sciences, you need to have thirty credits of botany and thirty credits of zoology mm. at first year level, okay. um, and that's besides you know what you majored in and your other so the sciences are quite complex. Mm. So that's the one part, and then another tip would be for students interested um, in doing life skills or LO if you like, um, you need to have psychology three with at least a hundred and twenty credits sort of at undergrad level mm -hmm. um, and then you need to have a second subject you can't only do life skills um, at UCT's with UCT's PGCE mm -hmm. yeah so you, uh, so also you know just in our leaflet on our on our web pages you need to kind of see and consultations with me I do loads of email consultations we have breakdown you know which subjects are recommended sort of some subject combinations um, it's, it's really important to find that out and then in terms of maths, um, students, a lot of students get that wrong. Uh, for example, mm. you get um, quantity literacy in humanities, and students think you know that's eligible for the PGC. It's really not, because uh, according to Mr. Tech, which is the government policy that we follow, it's not listed, and so it's not eligible. So it's always good to check with me, get a consultation in terms of the mathematics, be it first year level or pure maths, mm. um, and I'll be happy to guide students on those. All right. Yep. Any closing tips, Munaka, that you have uh, to someone who's looking to to apply? Um, for the people looking to apply, I definitely recommend that you throw yourself into the process as soon as possible. Like Nicole said, the sooner you get um, to the websites and have access to the information, the less overwhelmed you feel as opposed to like trying to apply in the last week. As well as documentation, get that sorted out as early as possible. Second tip that I have is just structurally, the websites and the handbooks are very helpful. So give yourself a weekend at least to like go through that. Also, people are very kind in the postgraduate space or rather in the education space. So if you do know someone that's in a PGCE, reach out, ask questions. I myself am available as well, um, either on LinkedIn or my Instagram. Just pop a question and ask if you feel that something is too daunting. And then lastly, um, immerse yourself not only in the structural process, but in the in the sentiment side of things. So what is a PGCE? What can you expect and anticipate? And I believe YouTube videos are great for that. I don't know the YouTube channels themselves, but if you just say PGCE UCT experience, then people usually give you all of the information you need, the resources and what to exp um, to anticipate in that short in that short space of time in that year that we have. But yeah, I say throw yourself at it, get started immediately, and have loads of fun. It's been an incredible journey so far, and I can't wait to see the glory at the very end. Great. And the social media handle. Um, it's just my you. name and surname, monakamunyai at gmail.com, and then LinkedIn, same thing, or rather not at gmail.com, monakamunyai on Instagram at gmail.com as well, and then um, it's the same on LinkedIn, just monakamunyai. Right. Any closing tips, hacks that you have? Maybe some reminders. Mm. <laughs> Correct application code. Please look out for those. Do not submit incomplete transcripts. If you in third year, you would obviously, um, your third year, um, you know, transcript would lack results. That's okay. I want to see the number of credits that you have and the course description. That's okay. As long as I can see first and second year sort of results and everything else. Mm. If you sort of a graduate, I need the graduation certificate with a complete transcript. Okay, Brilliant. lovely stuff. Good people, we have come to the end of our podcast today. This here conversation would would not make sense at all if we didn't have a candidate fellow or student within the program uh, to help guide the conversation and us get you know, insight from a lived experience perspective. Nicole, we are so incredibly grateful that you made the time 
to come speak uh, with us today and just to situate what it means to really be an applicant and what are the things to look out for. Um, and we really love our relationship as an organization with you, an institution, um, on this journey to alleviate the crisis of education in our country. So thank you so much. My first co-pilot, really the first to do it. The first well, ever. The first <laughs> ever to do it. Thank you so much, Unaka. Thank you so much for grounding the conversation with your lived experience. Um, with so much generosity and insight, really, really, really appreciate it. Go to our social media spaces. Jake's have our fellowship across the board. Go to your favorite uh, search engine. Type in our name there. You will find any and everything that you need to help you understand what it is that we're about and also find out ways in which how you can apply to be part of our fellowship and find out ways in which you can partner uh, and speak to the issue of the education crisis in our country um, together. I am Mata Wotladi and we will see each other on the other side of this. Cheers. <laughs>